Hi, uh, it's me again. So it's uh, now in the previous video we looked at how to structure a scientific hypothesis uh, or paper, and I would like to this video will be shorter uh, about very common pitfalls that that I seen over and over again. So that I hope it will help you avoid those pitfalls. Okay. Um, first of all, the, I think the uh, the biggest one is a lack of clear research question or objective, meaning that I've seen over and over um, works, reports, or, or let's say your thesis, where the, um, the, the problem was not stated, it was not very concrete, okay? And so this leads to a very unfocused work, okay? You should clearly state what you're trying to do and what your objective is and be as concrete as possible. Now, whenever in doubt, ask your uh, your tutor, or if you're in one of my courses, ask me anytime, uh, and uh, just to uh, so we can uh, uh, we can discuss about that. But very, it's suggestion I always give students is to try to put on paper what you're trying to do and be as precise as possible. If you are looking, uh, just to give an example, for example, maybe you are looking at how, um, I don't know, the um, number of schools in a city or, uh, you know, like uh, you want to study like the effect of uh, the number of schools in different areas in a city on, for example, price of, of, of uh, apartments, um, you should be very, uh, very clear about what kind of schools are you looking at right? Um, what kind of apartment are you looking at? Are you looking at all apartments? Are you looking only apartments that are in a specific price range? Are you looking at only like, for example, at prices for of apartment that are rented by families or, or even for like uh, clearly apartments that are not meant for families, like one single rooms, only ones and so on and so forth. Okay, so you should be really as clear as possible because otherwise it's very hard to to judge relevance it's very hard to judge uh, to, to follow the story okay you're not telling a clear story to your readers okay um, now overloading introduction is another one so uh, you should give just enough context enough background so that people understand your question your problem and its relevance okay leave details and state of the art and discussion about possibilities to later sections okay uh, it's like in storytelling be precise give context give relevance and move on okay um, also like uh, something else is like a disorganized presentation of related work so when you're looking at uh, and you're like uh, studying uh, state-of-the-art multiple papers, books and so on, what you have to do is to kind of structure these works in, uh, in some way so that you can explain like why you look at a specific paper. Maybe you are looking at all possible way of solving a problem. Maybe you are looking at, you know, like uh, all possible kind of data sets. Uh, available for a specific problem. Uh, depending on the kind of problem you're trying to address, you should always try to organize your, uh, the let's say, the state of the art, your research in some way. Okay, so it's not enough to simply choose three to five random papers and explain them one after the other. You should tell me why you're looking at those papers, why they're relevant for your problem, and why you chose to those five instead of other five, right? And how they kind of goes together, okay? Um, so also something else that is, that is a very big one that I've seen over and over again that is in inadequate explanation of methods. Meaning that very, very, very often I see that students write down the method section uh, without enough information for reproducibility, meaning that there is not enough information to sit down and reproduce what you've done. You should always be as precise as possible, include all parameters for every small details of what you've done so that I can take your description and re redo what you've done without having to ask you something, okay? Um, always remember that as a guideline, 
um, if someone, if you would read that, you should be able to reproduce it without looking at your code or reusing something that you have somewhere. Um, so you can always, like as a guideline, give it to a friend with a kind of the same experience and say, okay, would you be able to do that if I give you this? Right? And if they say no, then you know that you don't have enough information in there. Okay. Um, so mixing results and discussion, that's also something that is sometimes is difficult to understand the, the, the let's say, the, the differences between results and discussion, right? Because they're kind of intertwined, right? But, but basically, you, you can think of it this way. Results, right, uh, and discussion and also methods. Sorry, for, for uh, I will add also methods, right? Because the thing that in the methods you explain how things work, how the methods work, in the results you give actually the number you got and in the without interpretation and in the discussion you interpret the results. So again, three steps, right? Methods, how things work, without any interpretation, without any numbers. Then what results the method you describe gave you and then the discussion, right? So how you interpret the result, why, why they are better than others and so on and so forth, okay? Um, and then another one is neglecting to address limitation. As I mentioned in the previous video, um, you know, explaining uh, limitations will give credibility to your work. It means you understand very well where your methods work and where they don't. Okay, and it's important because every method will have some limitation. There is no method that works in one hundred percent of the cases, right? And it's very important to highlight that because that gives also credibility to uh, how relevant your model, to your uh, assessment of the relevance of your model, right? If you say your model is very relevant, but you don't discuss limitation, it's difficult to believe you because maybe, you know, maybe you say it's relevant, but there are like 2000 cases where it doesn't work. So it's always important to, to say the positive uh, things about a method, but also when it doesn't work, okay? Um, and the last one is poor data visualization, meaning that when you're talking about your data, you should, first of all, you should use visualization as often as possible. If you can visualize examples, if you're working with images, for example, just show me the images, show me some examples, okay? If you have like a, a complicated data set with lots of features, describe the features for me, okay? Uh, use tables. Use plots to study, for example, you know, if there are outliers. Explain me how you identify outliers. Use box plots. Use, you know, bar plots for distributions. Uh, give me an idea about, like, uh, for example, if data sets are unbalanced, use bar plots to show me, uh, for example, uh, how many inputs you have in, in a specific class or how many inputs you have in a different class and so on and so forth, right? And also, this is also a big one regarding plots, and that applies also to presentation that I've seen over and over. Um, make the plots simple and clear. Remember, one plot should answer or should give one or two messages, not more than that. Okay, the more information you put in a plot, the more messages the plot can give and will give, and the more difficult will be for people to understand without an explanation. It's very hard to make complicated plots self-explanatory, okay? So my suggestion is make them easy, okay? Make them simple. Uh, make sure that all the labels are there. Use units of measurement. So if you say, if you have a time, put if it's month, if it's seconds, if it's minutes, if you have like distance, put kilometers, put miles, whatever. Make the fonts large enough so that you can read them, okay? I've seen over and over again in presentation and also in, in scientific reports, figures that are so small that it's very hard to read the fonts, right? Put legends on the plot. Um, if, you have, if you can, avoid too many colors. Sometimes people are colorblind, so use, uh, for example, dash lines, dot lines, continuous line to make sure that you are not depending on the colors. And, and so on, okay? Always try to think about, is my plot clear? And also something else that is important, for every figures you have in your report, papers, uh, presentation, always put some kind of caption that explains it, okay? Presentations are a slightly different kind of situation, but in papers and reports, you always have to have a, a caption that explains as much as possible. As a reader, I don't want to 
uh, to go into the text and search where the where the image is explained. So put as much information as you can in the caption, even if it means repeating something that is already in the text. Okay. So those are the um, the main uh, pitfalls. I've not touch things like uh, typos, grammatic, proper writing and stuff like that. Okay, Things like typos or like, uh, for example, uh, making grammatical mistakes are not excusable anymore. Okay, So it's not even a question if you, for example, if you have to write it in English and your English is not your mother tongue, with the tools that we have today uh, is really like uh, it, you really cannot make th those mistakes anymore. So they're not acceptable anymore. So really check for typos. Uh, I mean, even Word, any tools will highlight if a word is written wrongly, okay? Um, and stylistical details matters a lot. So for example, if you're using a, 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 a British kind of English where you have like, instead of Z, you have an S, for example, visualize is written differently in English and, and American English and British English. Choose one and stick with it. Uh, people that knows how to write and knows the language will notice that. And that kind of sticks out and it, it will put the reader in a kind of like in a negative attitude toward your work. So details matter. So try to pay attention to all of this. Okay. So I hope it was a helpful video and uh, always if in doubt, ask your tutor, if you're working with me, ask myself anytime and uh, to discuss any possible questions.